the uh, company started in uh, 1939. My father was working for Reed uh, Wrecking and Towing Company in Sarnia. And a friend of his uh, who operated uh, the Port Huron Sulfite and Paper Company, they bought a ship. Later on, he expanded by chartering two ships from his friend Captain Scott Meisner of the Meisner Steamship for carrying pulpwood. Then I went up to the pulpwood for Howard. We were working out of Spanish at that time. Okay. And then Manitou and I hung and right up to the Sioux and loading pulpwood. They had a tug, the Harrison, a small tug, and a barge, and they they tow uh, pulpwood out of the Manitoulin Island. Pulpwood was uh, carried out of uh, uh, Manitoulin Island, out of uh, South Bay and uh, Gore Bay. To the paper mills in Detroit and uh, Port Huron. And they accumulate a lot of land up there. We had 600 acres in at Michaels Bay in the South Shore. And we... They had reduced their fleet in 1952 and then waited till the seaway came through and then started up again. Basically, they had tug and barge and one small canal size ship. For a year, we were out of business. But we uh, also bought the three barges and tug from uh, Detroit Sulfate, which we got rid We all mortgaged our homes and we bought the George Hine, the first one, the canaller. There's five of us went in on the, on the first boat. Now, this is George and yourself and. Yeah, and Howard. Howard. And Charlie Randall, senior. And Charlie Jr. never come across with his money, so he eliminated him. And so that's how we got that boat. The Howard Hyman they purchased in 1961, the uh, George Hyman 1962, uh, which I went over to. Uh, 1964 they bought the Ruth Hyman, the Helen Hyman, and 1966 they bought the Martha Hyman. Well, I was on the last one that he. I think it'd be the better one was the Martha, mm -hmm. and uh, a good story about that one was we got to Buffalo and we were getting her inspected by the shore marine, and uh, guess what? She only had one lifeboat, so they made us go to Port Coburn to get a boat lifeboat. They sent it from Owen Sound down. So they had seven seven ships they had in their fleet by 1967. At the uh, high point of uh, the company, there were 15 uh, in total, including tugs and barges. So they carried grain, iron ore, coal, salt, uh, you know, anything anything in, in that type of cargo. We, we had no trouble getting ore contracts when they opened the seaway to uh, bring ore up from Seven Islands to Lake Erie. Quite often, they, uh, my grandfather and my father traveled uh, to Winnipeg uh, and uh, offered uh, what they called bottoms, was uh, available space on ships to carry grain products. And they would contract with uh, the Canadian Wheat Board. And we'd haul grain from Thunder Bay and Duluth down to uh, Montreal, Quebec City, and Port, you know, Bay Como. And then on the return, we'd get iron ore from Port Cartier, Seven Islands, and come back up to uh, Buffalo, Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago. I don't think the nine years I was there, we ever, ever laid up during the season at all. We were going right through. In those years, there was no vacation pay. You went, you went in April and came home in December. I know we left here the 27th of March, one spring. We got back to Old Sound, I think it was the 17th of December. Just straight, never stopped. You know? They got a lot of cargo through the agents in the States. I know in Cleveland, they always told us if they, when cargoes were scarce, he said, if we can get a cargo for Howard, he'll get the cargo. You know, they, he was really liked, well liked on the American side. There was ups and downs. There was a readjustment in uh, 1967. The grain trade fell apart and uh, there was a reduction in their ships laid up in 68. Uh, 
Actually, in 68, the, uh, we, they, we didn't run the Howard Hyman. Uh, sat idle for all that year. And uh, uh, the Blanche Hyman uh, was sold for scrap. So there was a reduction in the fleet. I think Hyman himself was good old George. And Howard was darn good too. And the guys he had working for him were excellent. Because, you know, if you need repairs, they were there to get us repaired in Harbor, coming to Midland or anything. I was actually uh, in charge of things going wrong. The thing was that you had to, nobody ever phoned you at 2 o'clock in the morning and said things were going right. It was, it was always trouble. I went ashore as, uh, I had the title of Marine Superintendent. But I just thought I was jack of all trades, <laughs> as it turned out. <laughs> because we broke ice, we had a machine shop, we did our winter, our, our repair work. Uh, of course, these were old ships that were one step from the going for scrap. So you had a lot of, uh, with, uh, canvas, with steamship inspection, you had to keep uh, working to keep them, keep, keep them more or less uh, what they demanded. And the uh, wintering of the vessels, uh, it provided work for a lot of uh, uh, welders, fitters, uh, doing uh, winter repairs on the vessels. They had a, a tug they used to break the ice uh, in the harbor and out the bay to, uh, because we unloaded the ships at the elevators through the winter with storage grain and other company ships that were in Owen Sound at the time. But every time you got a southwest wind, uh, you uh, went out to try to get out to open water and broke the ice from there in and cleared the ice right out of the harbor. We were down to four ships in 1971, and I was 39 years old, and I had an idea they might sell or, or cease operation. I didn't see, see them selling, I just thought they might see something. The economy was on a real downturn and shipping was just not a, uh, uh, a good place to be. I know Parker wanted to retire, certainly. Uh, he had more or less retired just before they sold. Uh, and Howard wasn't the best of health. My father had wanted to uh, retire early and uh, spent some time uh, traveling with my mother, and unfortunately she uh, passed away in 78. They had pretty good business contracts, uh, and the company they sold to, I believe, more or less wanted their ships because they had the, they, he, Howard had good business contacts. So my father sold the, the fleet to Quebec and Ontario Transportation. Just after they sold, the Crow's Nest Pass Railway changed out west, the grain trade fell right off to nothing. And actually, uh, the ships that he sold to Quebec and Q&O, they uh, went out of business in 81. I know I, I have uh, sailed with uh, several who, who remember uh, who remember the company quite well. They did a good job for own sound and they got a lot of people out of here. You could be cooks, you could be firemen, wheelsmen, deckhands, you know, and uh, they hired a lot of own sound people. And uh, I sure went through with a bunch of them and they were, they were good to work for. They employed a lot of surprising employees, you know. Each ship they carried 20 some people, you know, on each ship. And uh, so, with engineers, crew, unlicensed crew and that, it, it was quite a little business for a small town, you know.